Coach Day talked about having to re-engineer the defense after the loss at Oregon. But to the naked eye, there's, there's you know it's not like we re, redid the whole thing, but you know when you when you start from scratch, there's just certain things that um, you either make assumptions on or you have to make sure that you're putting the right guys in the right place, and you know, all it takes is a little bit to be off, and, and when you add these little things up over time, um, they can make a big difference, and I think. The guys are understanding that. I think they know how they can go win a game, but then we have to have the change-ups you know, somewhere along the game to keep people off balance. Um, so without getting too technical on it, you know, I, I think that you know, we have the right people in the right spots. I think we're getting lined up faster and getting set, getting our cleats in the ground and being more aggressive on the perimeter. Yeah, I mean, I think that when we get in the red zone, you know, it changes a little bit, you know, because Coach Knowles always says, give us an inch, we'll defend it. Uh, it's kind of what we, we pride ourselves on is being able to get those big stops like we did last week against Penn State on the one-yard line. So that's kind of like who we want to be in our DNA, you know, being a tough physical front, linebacker safety is coming downhill and hitting on the goal line. So uh, that's kind of like our, our mantra right now. And they turned it around, stepping up big at Penn State, but Tyleek Williams went out with an injury. Coach said that he could have played today, but it was just better to rest him so that he's good to go for next week. We, Tyleek was available, could have played, but we felt like, you know, we're going to hold him unless we really needed him. Um, you know, plan on getting him back for next week, full go. I think that, you know, across the board, we're all playing really well. And you see guys, every every game is kind of someone different making a bunch of plays. It's kind of just how the game of football goes sometimes, especially when teams don't play the same way they're playing other guys. Uh, that's why you don't see maybe the numbers that we would love to see. Definitely on the edge uh, when the ball is coming out quick and doing different stuff, chipping us. So, uh, but, you know, today was a good one for the defense. Still, Coach loved the disruption up front and the forced fumble, scoop and score from JT Tumaloa and Jack Sawyer. That was the epitome of that. I think that, you know, we got such a veteran group of guys that, you know, we've been in the system. You know, we've all played that before. And uh, it gave us a good chance to put, you know, some of the guys in that, that deserve some reps while we give, you know, the guys, the first guys, you know, a little bit of a breather too on the D-line. And we knew they weren't going to get, they weren't going to let anything up because we trust in them fully. So, uh, you know, we're just so veteran and, you know, we've been around the system for so long that, you know, we know it inside now that gives us, that gives the coaches the confidence to call it. Coach loved the disruption he saw up front. The forced fumble, scoop and score from JT2 Malo out and Jack Sawyer was the epitome of that. Jack Sawyer had been due for a big play. And he was super excited about his touchdown. He even had a celebration planned, but he wasn't quite able to get to that thing that he blacked out during the whole thing. I didn't see the football. I'm going to have to go get one. I'm going to talk to Coach Day about <laughs> that. He might, get a call. he might get a call later tonight, see where that ball is at. You didn't just tuck it away. I should have. I honestly, you kind of like, I haven't, like I said, I haven't scored a touchdown in five years. So when I scored, I kind of blacked out. I had, <laughs> I had all sorts of celebrations planned. Like the last three years, I scored a touchdown. And then, you know, you kind of do it and, it, and it all just falls away for a second. You don't know where you're at. What celebrations did you have planned? I'm going to save that for if I score again. Okay. <laughs> got to keep those tough. Coach Day might not be happy with them. But we'll see. With eight Buckeyes receiving passes today, Coach Day talked about the selflessness on offense. Because there's so many weapons and you need to have lots of involvement. There's only one football, after all. There's a lot of reasons to go no huddle. There's a lot of reasons to huddle and... When we're huddling, then we're not getting as many plays. You know, we're getting, you know, we end up with 66 plays, and then, you know, our, our starters are pretty much out there in the fourth quarter. So there's just not as many plays as there used to be. So um, a big part of this season is understanding that, you know, the touches and the numbers aren't always going to be as high as maybe in the past. So guys guys like Emeka and Carnell, you know, they, they understand that. It's not always easy. You know, you want to have an impact on the game, but, you know, they, their their time is gonna is coming. You know, those these big games are coming. Um, you know, as as we continue to move through November, and we're gonna need them to play at a high level. But um, you know, we're looking for that that combination, obviously, of being explosive on the perimeter, downfield, and then obviously in the run game. And you know, we need everybody involved with it. You know, and, and a big part of that is being unselfish. It's a big part. We're, when we go into the winter, we have to have an unselfish offense and defense. But you know, when you're on offense, there's only one football. And we got to do everything we can to win the game. And uh, good to see him make him get that touchdown. Uh, but you know, he, you know, here's a guy who sure certainly he wants you know more touches. Uh, any receiver does. Uh, but he's not a guy that is going to be selfish and make it about him. He knows the bigger picture on this. He's a captain, one of the best receivers in the history of Ohio State football. And I know the fans appreciate who he is. With a 45 to zero blowout, more players got reps today. But Will Howard praised his receivers, saying there's not much of a drop off from the ones to the twos. That means that you know we got everybody's everybody's clicking, man. And when you, when you get eight guys involved, I mean that's huge. Like that's um, that means that you know the twos are ready, you know, to step in when they when they have to. And 
and you know that means the you know the ones we can you know the, those those first guys can come out and take a break, break if they need it you know and that fires me up you know that's that's a, that's a good sign that means that everybody's locked in everybody's you know there's really not much drop off you know and I, from the from the ones to the twos and that's crazy to say when I just said you know that our three starters are the best in the country like to say that our our you know backups isn't a huge fall off is it's saying something you know like we got we got a lot of talent in that room. And the tight ends, I think the tight ends are doing some really good things too. So um, yeah, it's 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 encouraging, and we want to be playing our best football in November. And you know, I think today was a good step. Got to learn from some things, and, and, and just keep it going. Last week was the only game this season that true freshman sensation Jeremiah Smith did not find the end zone. But he says that doesn't change his motivation at all. Not really motivated me. Um, it just I could have gotten end zone just. Yeah, uh, I made a mistake. Yeah, That's all that goes into it. Um, but you know, it wasn't really no motivation for me. Um, I just know what I'm. I just know what I'm gonna go out there and do every week, and I just get my best and get in the end zone for sure every week. Jeremiah got right back to scoring touchdowns this week, breaking not one but two of Chris Carter's records. With his ninth touchdown catch of the season, Jeremiah has now broken Chris Carter's record for most receiving touchdowns by an Ohio State freshman. And that was after he had already passed his record for most catches of an Ohio State freshman earlier in the game. Yeah, I didn't recognize I broke it until uh, I looked up at a job trying to all my teammates, all the receivers were happy for me. Yeah, I broke it down in my notes and uh, changed your record. You wrote down like a lot of goals, like you said. Um, yeah. So that needs to be sure. His quarterback, Will Howard, says that even as a freshman, Jeremiah is the best receiver in the country. But what sets him apart is his maturity. He already seems like a veteran. I think it's the way he carries himself. You know, I think I mean, he runs unbelievable routes. He's fat, He's one of the fastest guys on our team. Um, he's physical. But I think one of the, the biggest things about him is how he carries himself. And just, you know, I know Coach Kelly said it a couple weeks ago, but, like, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't tell he's an 18-year-old kid out there. He, he just looks like a vet. Like he, he looks like he's been doing it for a long time. I mean, does he have freshman moments? You know, of course, everybody does. Um, but, you know, like overall, like, I mean, if you look at like his, like he's, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have missed assignments. You know, he's always kind of where he needs to be. He, he knows, he knows what's going on. And, and for a freshman to step into an offense like this, of this caliber, and, and to, you know, not skip a step and to know what he's doing all the time, like that's, that's special, and that's, I think, what really separates him from the rest of the pack. As a freshman, I think he's, if not the one, one of, I think he's the best receiver in the country. Um, you know, I think I think we have the three best receivers in the country on our team. You know, I'm obviously I'm biased, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm lucky, man. I, to, to have guys like that, you know, doing what they're doing. I knew, I knew Jeremiah was going to be special, you know, from the first time I met him, and um, he's just continued to get better and better, and, and he's a great kid, and, and uh, I'm really happy for him getting that getting that record today. Um, but like nobody really was like shocked. Everyone was kind of like, oh yeah, you know, JJ is just kind of doing his thing again, you know. Um, and he's, I mean, he's he's unbelievable. So um, I'm happy for him, and, and he's just going to continue to get better and better. Will Howard was not happy with his performance at Penn State after the pick six and the fumble in the end zone. But today, he threw for 260 yards, three touchdowns, plus one on the ground. He didn't turn the ball over. A great game by all means, but Will doesn't exactly see it that way. He says there's always room for improvement. Yeah, I wouldn't say mistake-free. Um, you know, if you look at the stats, you could say mistake-free and, and turnover-free, but definitely not mistake-free. There's probably five or six plays I'd like to have back, you know, kind of through Carnell on that one. Lost my footing a couple times. Um, but, you know, overall, you know, to come out of it, what is it 21 and 26 you know that, that that's solid and you know I'm, I'm i'm proud of how i you know took care of the ball today um and you know that's a big big emphasis for us so um coming off well, after last week you know this is a solid performance but not perfect by any means and i you know i've still got a lot of stuff to clean up so um you know that's that's how i like to approach th these things you know i'm never never satisfied Will said that he's been slipping a lot and he wants to clean everything up. So he let everyone know he has a solution for that. And he assured us he's buying new cleats this week. I'm going to get new cleats, by the way. <laughs> so uh, just so you guys know, I'm slipping way too much and I look way un too unathletic on that times. I'm going to get new cleats next week. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll fix that. It won't be happening anymore. The Buckeyes look to keep their momentum going and we keep hearing them talk about leaving no doubt, no matter the opponent. Will says that it's not about them, it's about us. You know, he, he made some nice throws today, uh, took care of the football, 
but uh, we did have the one sack that we liked to throw away there. But then he came right back and made you know, two nice throws to get us back into it, which was which was huge. Um, I thought the the second and long throw Jeremiah was great, and then obviously the, uh, the third down they came with zero pressure. I think Trey did a great job of picking it up, and then he found his his hot answer right there. So those are the things that uh, are important. But um, we're going to go back on the film and, and figure out the things that we got to continue to clean up and get better at across the board. And, uh, it wasn't all clean today. It wasn't, but I thought guys played hard. And, and again, good to see us respond coming off an emotional win. You watch it all across college football. You know, um, you know we, we've been a part of that too. When you come off an emotional win like that, and you have a letdown going we'll into the game, we just like, we're in November now. Like every single snap matters. Every every play matters. And that being said, I, I think some guys took that opportunity in the second half, some young players, to use those snaps as an opportunity to make a name for themselves because we're going to need depth as we continue to go through no, through November. We've already seen that. So um, you know, good to see us respond coming off an emotional one last week. Ohio State heads to Chicago to face Northwestern, but they will be playing in your typical football stadium. In fact, it's not even a football stadium. The Buckeyes head to Wrigley Field, the home of the Chicago Cubs. Jeremiah doesn't care much for baseball, but he's still really excited about the special venue. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, look, I'm looking forward to it. Um, hopefully the field is pretty good, but yeah, I can't wait to experience that.